Hello, uh, my name is Clémentine Plissonnier and I am the game designer on uh, Flatai. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Anthony Genot, I'm the writer of Flatai. Now, can you folks give us kind of a little ele elevator pitch about what this game's all about? It's like a, it's like a mini mart uh, management game, but taking place in the post-apocalyptic dystopia. Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, but you got some of the elements uh, right. Unfortunately, it's, a, it's quite a complex game. So Flatter is a narrative management game in which you manage a gas station in Iceland. And at the start of the game, uh, a very powerful AI uh, decides to use that station as a as a experiment ground to test new technologies and try to find like a viable future so the human race will not destroy itself. And it's part management, uh, so you're gonna have to make sure customers are happy, buy new, buy new technologies, build them, but also you're going to have to talk to customers, uh, you're going to have to make choices, you're going to unlock uh, different endings and so on. How many people are on your team working on Flateye? Uh, we are about uh, 15 working like every day and we have a lot of people that come to uh, uh, give us a little hand on uh, graphic design, uh, playtesting, uh, some some developing that is very advanced. So we have a lot of people that are involved in the project. Do you folks have a favorite part of the game you like to work on personally? Uh, I don't think I can answer writing. It would be a bit... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that um, the, the, the best part for me is really to um, to create, to have like started the, the world, but see other people uh, uh, chip in and come with ideas and uh, visual ideas uh, through more, like motion designs and, and stuff like that. It's it's really awesome. Uh, Clementine, what's your favorite part? I think my favorite part is working on the systems. Like it's a management game. There are a lot of systems that have to work together. And since I am the only one working on the design, uh, I have to like. Uh, play uh, uh, with every system so that it works and it is balanced and it is complex but also very exciting for me. Now this game deals with a lot of themes of tech and its impact on you know social structure in our lives. Can you speak more on this uh, about the story of the game? Well, the, the original idea was to really question how technology can be can help us or can be a, a danger to, to, to us. And weirdly enough, as we were going through the game, uh, we started to realize that um, that was a really good question. But the, 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 the crucial part, I think, is really how like how do humans um, tend to hurt themselves or help themselves and they would use stuff around them whether whether it's technology it's very advanced technology like cloning or, or teleportation or just other human beings and that idea of um, uh, relationship and communication uh, of course is helped a lot by technology but um, I think yeah that, that that's really what 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 was important for us with that game like to to question how do people uh, connect and react to uh, each other? So Flatai is a management sim, uh, sim. Can you share more about the gameplay and what sort of things players will be managing? So my players will have to manage a lot of modules uh, that are basically text that you can install in your little station. And basically you have to manage, well, your money because text costs a lot of money. And you also have to manage the resources that they cost. So we are in a world that where resources are very scarce. And so uh, your station will try to be as autonomous as possible. So you have, for example, to, um, to uh, recycle uh, elements that maybe uh, will be uh, left after an operation in your surgery booth. Uh, to feed your next customer with meat or whatever. It, it, ca it can be a bit gross, but basically the idea is that you must, you must recycle your resources and connect your module toge together. And so that's the basic uh, management uh, that you'll have to do. Uh, then you have to satisfy your customers that, will, that may uh, come with specific uh, um, goals. And so it's going to be a little gymnastics between planification of what they want and uh, reaction. Talk, talk a little bit more about this tech tree. Like you can have like station modules uh, and you're yeah, like, what are some of the fun ones you were able to develop for this game that you really enjoy? There are a lot of modules that are a bit 
weird that we were not very comfortable uh, with at first and Anthony made, made them uh, really more close to us uh, with the writing because we see customers use them in their common life so that's really a proof for, for example at the beginning I was really uh, yeah I was feeling a bit weird about our artificial uterus that allows you to like grow babies in the service station and then pick <laughs> it up when you when it's done so it's a bit like it's a bit weird and then uh, the stories come up so you can see a character that really wants a baby and so she can she can grow this baby and it's really simple for her and there is a story about that about uh, how, how emotional that can be and so yeah the stories are really great to help us understand that it's not just about uh, uh, being a, a sarcastic game about uh, the future it's also about the story about about the people and how their uh, everyday life can be really changed and influenced by the technology so uh, you know, expanding on that idea, what kind of narrative can players expect with interacting with platinum customers in the game, Anthony? So um, if you've played our previous game, Night Call, it's going to be similar in a way that you're going to be you're going to quickly become very friendly with those those with those customers. They're going to come often. They're going to come uh, uh, several times in a row, and you'll you'll get to meet them for real and discover what is their like uh, real goals and dreams and emotions and stuff like that. Um, and for us, that was that's really important. That that's part of the games that we make. We want to talk about like the everyday life as well. Uh, and some of the narrative, uh, some are funny. We have a, we have a, a conspiracy theorist that, that comes to your station and checks every module. and. And tries to come up with weird uh, theories uh, about them. And then you have uh, some stories are kind of sad because some some characters are desperately trying to to rekindle uh, the love they have for their for their spouse. And they are going through different modules, cloning themselves, making them uh, making themselves uh, thinner, stronger, remove some memories. But in the end, it's uh, really about uh, yeah human human emotions. Your mic is there. You off. go. This game looks looks so uh, looks so different from any other games I've played. Uh, like, talk about the art style in the game. Like, where did that idea come from, and how did you guys grow and make that idea a reality? Yeah. So one of our initial goals was really to get out of the dystopian look that many uh, science fiction games have, uh, and we really wanted to uh, find something that was more, let's say, European, something closer to European uh, bande dessinée, comic books, stuff like that. And so we we met, uh, we found this uh, this awesome English artist called uh, named Sorry uh, Owen Pomery, who does like very like gorgeous uh, gorgeous um, uh, landscapes and and buildings. And from that, we started to work, trying to get some some shell shading to have outlines to have something which is very clear. And um, yeah, again, trying to get away from the usual uh, stereotypes that you can have for science fiction, which is like gritty, cyberpunk, all, 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 all that, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, it's um, we want a game that is soothing as well when you look at it, uh, something with. A lot of colors, uh, a lot of uh, cool animations going going on. Can you elaborate? Because you, you, it's interesting because it's not you don't want like you said you didn't want like your standard post dystopia because there are a lot of different versions of uh, of a you know post dystopia you know world, but usually most of them have like zombies or they're super like Mad Maxi you know. But like they, there are like a Blade Runner's a good one. Like there that world is very dystopian but it's like everything still functions very similar to, to to flat eye like everything still works even though it's a dystopian society everyone's still going about their day still using technology you know life doesn't stop it continues uh can you talk about what that opened for me from a narrative point like having that genre to write in as opposed to like fantasy or like super realistic or super fiction i think that it it so the first thing is that we 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 decided to go that in that direction uh, right before COVID uh, hit, <laughs> and I think it was like a, like a really good idea to be like, let's do something a bit more positive. I think people will need that. So two years later, I think I'm really happy that we decided to change the tone. Otherwise, we would have spent two years uh, writing depressing stuff while in the, in the midst of a 
the pressing era. Uh, that's the first thing. I think that uh, some of our references are also uh, what you could call um, uh, dystopian science fiction, uh, which is like people like William Gibson or, or Philip, Philip K. Dick, uh, authors who are trying to talk about uh, not the f like the, the process of falling into dystopia. Uh, and, and most of their novels are really like you you see the process and you know that it's going to end uh, uh, in a bad way. And what we're, gonna, we're trying to do with this game is offer players different options, different endings that might uh, be might lead humanity towards uh, utopia. Um, and also one of the, and I think Clement, uh, Clementine could uh, probably uh, uh, answer that as well, is uh, we also wanted to have a game which is cozy and chill, not chill, but something which is a bit less depressing and cynical. And that was really, really important for us to have someone like Clementine who could uh, uh, jump in and give us directions to steer away from the depressing, gritty, dark uh, science fiction. Clementine, when, when the story's being written and the world's rules are being worked out, um, how do you implement that into the gameplay? Can you talk about that process of how you work with the team and when they have an idea that's cool for the story, then you have to turn that into a gameplay mechanic? Yeah, so we have a system that uh, allows us to uh, like make pause uh, the management and get into uh, uh, a relationship with the premium customer a bit deeply. So there are two times, different times for, for the gameplay. And uh, uh, so that's that's one thing we do. And we also uh, have, uh, uh, basically we have to take care about our, uh, we have to care about our uh, premium customers to, uh, to make them come back and see and discover the rest of the story. So when the premium customer is not there, when you don't have to talk to them, etc., you have to re remember what they like, remember what they could need, and install it in, in the station, like a new module, uh, uh, an, yeah, an announcement uh, whatsoever. And when you install it, the premium customer is more likely to come back and you are more likely to deepen that connection uh, and uh, yeah, and continue the story. So uh, what we try to do for our players is for them to be very caring about their premium customers, uh, very um, connected with them so that they can anticipate that their needs and go to the end of the story. Now, what's it been like? I mean, obviously, we're still kind of in here in this post-pandemic situation. Like, how is, has that affected uh, development at all? How'd you guys adjust to the the COVID working from home home orders if if you had to? Yeah, that's. Um, I think um, I think it was different for for many um, many people on the team because our previous game has been done also remotely, and we met like three times across two years so um and i think uh, yeah covid was uh, was strange because we had to we were late on many many things and that's that's uh, that's a shame uh but we also got to learn how to communicate through like new tools and new ways to i don't know i think it was interesting it was depressing sometimes most of the time but uh, i think it was quite interesting i don't know if Timothy agrees <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it was a good test for the for the remote uh, work, and yeah, uh, I think that's yeah. <laughs> I don't have uh, much to add. Uh. Alright, so guys, and so what what um, platforms will your game come out on, and when does your game release? That's a really good question. Uh, we can't uh, we can't really talk about the release date now, uh, but it's going to be before the end of the year. And the game is going to be released on PC first, and then uh, we we are in the process of porting the game onto different consoles. Um, it has been, um, as we are all like uh, big uh, console players, and especially on, on the Switch, we really, we think we were kind of surprised by how many strategy management games came out on, on the Switch and are actually super cool to play in your bed really late which is very strange but uh yeah and uh so we, we want we really want the game to to be available on those on those consoles but uh we don't have anything to officially to announce right now so pc and the end of the year before the end of the year. 
And then where can people find more information about your game and where can they go to support it? Which is on Steam, Discord, that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, the the Steam page is probably your best uh, your best place right now. So uh, flat I uh, with the space between the two words on Steam, and we're gonna have a bunch of uh, announcements and cool videos across the summer. So I hope that uh, people are gonna be interested. They're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna wish list and subscribe so we can uh, we can show more of the game. <laughs>